The objective today is I can invent a binary call response protocol to overcome obstacles in the real world. So the purpose behind any number system is to solve problems just like what a computer scientist does. Man conveniently used a base 10 system probably because he or she looked down at their hands and found it convenient to use their 10 fingers. Binary is great for long distance communication. Hexadecimal is a great way to visualize the number of bits in something. Think right share what is the purpose behind any number system? So just so you know, there's a lot of different number systems that uh, mankind can use for a variety of purposes. Uh, hexadecimal is going to be one of them. I just want to briefly talk about that, but then we'll, we'll, we'll delve deeper into hexadecimal later on in the course. So hexadecimal means an 8-bit binary number can be written using only two different hex digits. So the purpose behind de hexadecimal is so we can represent binary even better, at least in computer terms. That's why we use hexadecimal. It is much easier to write numbers as hex than to write them as binary numbers. Keep this in the back of your mind. Uh, like I said, we'll revisit it later, especially in the context of talking about pixels. Um, the Mayan number system, this is unique to our current decimal system, as our current decimal system uses base 10. The Mayan number system uses base 20. So there are many different number systems, and you've probably heard of a couple of them. The number system we typically use for things like expressing the cost of something is base 10, but there are lots of other systems that are used for different purposes. All of these systems share two things. First, they all use symbols or markings to represent values. And second, they all have rules for how to move from one value to the next. What is something all number systems have in common? So, create a series of binary questions between a partner. After five total questions are created, now don't reveal your answers to each other, um, follow directions on the next slide, and then go back to your computers, and you're going to send each other the answers for each of those five questions. Um, so, here are a little more details to the directions there. You're using a binary number system now. Okay, you're going to use the Internet uh, Simulator widget, and instead of A's and B's, it's going to be 1's and zeros. So after you and the partner have your five questions, you guys are going to develop a protocol that allows you to use this simulator to relay a message, an answer to each of those questions. One member sends a message and the other member sends the same message back to confirm that you received it, okay? You or a teacher will say go. Um, in this context, you will be saying go, you and your partner. Uh, to begin the exchange, but otherwise all communication must be through the widget. As you're working, consider these same questions you've considered before. How will you know when the exchange is supposed to begin? How will you know whose turn it is to send or receive the message? And how will you coordinate your actions? So like before, you're going to click this link down here. Okay, It'll send you to a lobby, um, and eventually you'll join with your partner onto a page that looks like this. As promised, you're writing ones and zeros down here, not A's and B's, and you can send it, and then that will be um, in your sent log, and then the person um, receiving the message will have stuff up here. Okay, down here there's some more instructions, and um, for the My Device here you can organize these into four-bit chunks or whatever you want for your protocol, okay? So now that you're done doing that, you should be able to answer a question like this. What information would you need in order to decode the above message? And I've provided an exemplary response here for you. In order to decode this message into A's and B's, you need to know how often time is ticking on the x-axis of the graph. In more technical terms, you need to know the bit rate of the information being sent. How frequently is a new bit being sent? For example, if the clock is ticking at one speed, this could be interpreted as ABB, AABBB. But if the clock is tw ticking twice as fast, then the message could be um, double that. So without that information, it's impossible to know what that message is. And so now we go to the reading for the day. It is on the actual um, protocol that the internet uses for sending and receiving binary numbers, okay? It's uh, taken from a explain it to me like I'm five answer 
and an RFC paper. So let me just say before you start that reading that this actual uh, hypertext transfer protocol, the RFC for it is 176 pages. So I did my best to condense that down for you. Finally, the DOL. Uh, how can your protocol overcome the coordination timing and synchronization problems that arise in a binary system? Why are protocols important?